Hello all, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm back with uh, another uh, interesting topic. So let's learn something new. Uh, in today's video, I'll show you how to create AP standard invoice and how to validate up to account and transfer to GL. Uh, let's see how and what are the steps involved in creating a AP standard invoice in uh, Fusion. So the first thing is uh, one of the prerequisites is you should have uh, a roles like your accounts payable specialist or accounts payable manager in order to navigate to your AP invoice screen. So in my current case, I'm using this particular user and this user has that concerned uh, role. So let me navigate to invoices. Go to the task pan. And then uh, create invoice. There are different ways to create invoice. One is through your, your create invoice from spreadsheet, which is a uh, ADAPI, and uh, using your FPDI if you're getting the data from your uh, external legacy system. And this is another way wherein through a UI you can create AP invoices. So if it's a PO matched invoices, enter your PO number. So I'm taking an example of non PO matched uh, invoices. So enter the business unit. So I have access to a lot of uh, business units, this being a testing environment, and I want to use the business unit of US1 business unit. And uh, let me pick up uh, a supplier. I want to pick up uh, this particular supplier. So as soon as I enter the uh, supplier, the concerned supplier sites will be available in the uh, drop down. And uh, in this case, there is only one supplier site, and hence it is automatically defaulted. But otherwise, if it's more than one supplier site, I need to manually select that supplier site. And uh, based on the business unit, the legal entity is already uh, defaulted. Uh, enter the invoice number. I just want to use say ARB. Let me give some number. 900 what is my invoice amount so i just want to use some amount maybe 1900 and uh, these are the invoice type standard invoice prepayment debit memo credit memo without any tax retainage already so i'll just start with the standard invoice probably i'll try to create a separate uh, uh, videos for uh, debit memo credit memo prepayment and so on uh, so the description would be, I'll just say contractor payments for the month of October 21. So whatever the description, whatever I enter at the header level, the same thing will get stapled to the line level. So this is the uh, invoice date. That is the date which is printed on the physical copy of the invoice which issued from the vendor. Payment terms you can choose your uh, own payment terms so here in this case payment terms of immediate is defaulted from your uh, supplier or supplier site and uh, this is the term state so based on the payment terms and term state your due date will be uh, derived requester if it's a generally po based invoices you need to specify the requester that is the individual who submitted the request for the goods and services click on lines it's a po matched invoices then you can match uh, this invoice to the PO, but this is a non PO matched invoice, so I need to manually enter the invoice lines. So I'll just create one line with say 10,000. So the distribution set is defaulted from your supplier or supplier site. So distribution set is basically a group of uh, account code combinations or expenses which you want to group can be uh, grouped under distribution set, or if you can, if you want, you can even just enter one account code combination. So as soon as you select the uh, distribution set then the account code combination which is mentioned in the distribution set gets defaulted to the distributions so this is basically invoice header this is ap invoice lines and this is ap invoice distributions so let me click on distributions and the invoice uh, description whatever we entered at the header that is cascaded to the line level Now in the distributions, you can you choose the default distribution, which is defaulted by the uh, your distribution set, or you, if you want, you can even change. So I'm just leaving it as is. 
so these are the <coughs> some of the uh, critical fields what where we can see but there are a lot of other fields which are hidden so let me show you those fields as well and then let me try to explain a couple of the critical fields so let me click on show more this is in the header part so we were earlier under uh, general so there is accounting tax and additional information so under general uh, now you can see payment currency is also uh, a field which is defaulted here so payment currency uh, is same as your invoice currency in this case but if you want you can have a different payment currency that is your invoice currency can be usd and payment currency can be uh, say euro or something right so i think it is grayed out maybe probably i would have entered all the details but otherwise at the invoice entry level system will allow me to uh, change the payment currency accounting so under accounting part uh, you can see the real date uh, here you can see the ap invoice liability account this is not this uh, screen where you can see the total account code uh, the accounting entry for this particular invoice so this is just showing the liability account of this particular invoice which is departed from your supplier supplier side so this is the information which is required uh, for uh, tax and then the additional information is your uh, descriptive uh, flex field information Okay, so this is the header part now coming back to the lines so here you can see only a couple of the tabs but uh, if you click on view columns show all <coughs> it's still loading there are tons of uh, tabs here so as soon as uh, you click on a particular tab it directly takes you to the concerned uh, Yeah, it takes you to the concerned uh, tab, income tax, distribution. So let me start from the distribution. So distribution, we have seen this distribution and some reference information and approval status, whether it's required or not required. What is the source? It's a manual invoice entry and the requester information, some tax related information, withholding tax. So in this case, withholding tax is being defaulted from my supplier side. So there is a withholding tax code which is associated here if i want i can get rid of this or i can just leave it as is and uh, some other your uh, tax related uh, information then we can go to purchase order so if it's a po based information uh, if it's a po based invoice then you will be able to see the uh, concerned uh, po quantity unit price unit of measure and so on this is the po receipt information consumption advice landed cost inventory multi-period accounting if it's a multi-period mpa related invoice then multi-period accounting information your uh, 1099 information so this is used in your 1099 reporting uh, prepayment if it's an fa asset related information then you can enter your asset book asset category model number and etc and if it's a project accounting uh, is enabled uh, you can enter your project related information your project number task number expenditure item date expenditure operation and so on Okay, once you complete the entering of the uh, invoice you can click on invoice actions and if you want you can click on calculate tax so that you can see the tax calculated by the system uh, let me just enter the invoice amount as i think 10,900 okay this is 10,000 let me check the distributions 900 will be the tax i know in this environment there's a nine percent tax this invoice has the same supplier invoice data and amount as the invoice verify that it's a duplicate continue okay looks like this being a testing environment somebody else has uh, created similar invoice with the uh, same supplier invoice data and amount so that's the reason why it's giving you a warning <coughs> okay it's not yet validated so calculate tax, calculate tax. I mean, either you can click on calculate tax or you can directly click on validate. If you validate, the system will automatically calculate the tax. I just want to try this approach calculate tax. So, system has calculated tax of $900. So, not still in a not validated status. So, actions validate. <coughs> Okay, 
once your invoice is validated if the approval is required you can submit for an approval if the approval is not required then you will not do anything uh, it's validated so go to approval so i'll just do a force approval generally in a real client environment you will not give access of force approval to the users so approval is done so calculate tax is done validate is done apply or uh, apply prepayments if you want to uh, apply a prepayment to this particular invoice you can click on this and then you can select the prepayment so in this case you can see there's a bell button here so it says there is a one uh, prepayment available so but i'll not be applying this prepayment here i'll just create a separate video on uh, prepayment invoices and the manage holes if there are any holes then you can go to this manage holes and then you can view the uh, holes and uh, if you want to cancel this invoice you can use this if you want to delete the invoice generally you can delete the invoice only once it is uh, kind of created but not at uh, validated or not sent for an approval okay and if you want to make a payment you can use this particular option of pay in full so what i'll do is i'll now do a post ledgers that is your uh, final accounting of this invoice so that i can show you the accounting entries Okay, now the accounting is complete. If you want, you can click on view accounting, or if you want, uh, you can again go to this uh, validated. And then click on accounted. And then check the journal entry. If there are any holes, you can click on the concerned hyperlink here. I think the environment is a little bit slow today. Okay, so this is where you can see the accounting entry. If you want, you can export it to Excel. Click on export to Excel, and then you can review this accounting entry in Excel. So simple, the general entry is your uh, item expense account debit $10,000, liability $10,000, your non recurrable tax debit $900, liability account $900. And then your uh, liability account debit for uh, uh, 1090 and withholding tax payable account 1090 because there is a withholding tax with the uh, tax code which we have uh, used in our invoice. So to make this accounting entry clear, what I can do is I can take out uh, the withholding tax related uh, lines separately so that you can easily understand this accounting entry. So if you read the accounting entry, you have item expense account debit ten thousand dollars, non recurring tax nine hundred dollars, liability ten thousand dollars, liability nine hundred dollars. So debit ten thousand nine hundred, credit ten thousand nine hundred. So that is what is your uh, your AP invoice amount. Now there is a withholding tax. So the only entry for the withholding tax would be your withholding tax payable will be credited, and your liability account will be reduced to that extent. Uh, your liability is uh, debited to the extent of 1090 so in this case you can you'll be making a payment to the vendor for an amount of 10900 minus 1090 which is 9810 and if you want to see the uh, exact uh, journal entry or the gl journal batch you can go to again view accounting So this is your general batch name. So let me copy this batch name. And this is your journal header name. So now we can navigate to your GL screen and search for this particular journal batch and find this particular journal entry. 
Okay, let me now close this. Let me cancel this. Uh, I already have a GL uh, accountant or a GL uh, manager uh, roles, so I can directly go to my in the Spring Board. I should be able to find uh, general accounting. Yeah, general accounting journals. And uh, my ledger is, uh, yeah, I think my ledger is uh, US primary ledger. I mean, right ledger. So, manage journals, journal batch name. This is my journal batch name. So, search with the batch name. Okay, uh, there are two journals because one is under US primary ledger and another one is under the reporting ledger. So let's focus on the primary ledger. <clears throat> looks like there's a reporting ledger associated with this primary ledger in this test environment. So this is the general entry. Your uh, expense account debit, 10,900. Your library account credit, 10,900. And your withholding tax account uh, credit 1090 and your uh, library account uh, debit 1090. So let me click on the expand this or click on the hyperlink. Click on view transaction. This is your whatever we are trying to do now is the GL general drill down. Now we are moving from GL to the concerned subledger entry. So now this should take us to your concerned uh, invoice. Yes, so this is your invoice screen where you can see the all the details. So this is how you pick up the general batch name from AP invoice, go to your GL, search for the general, and then drill down from GL to the concerned uh, subledger. So you can do the same thing for any subledger entries. Thank you. Thanks for watching my video for interesting videos on Raquel uh, Financials. Please do subscribe to my channel. Thank you. Bye.